You know what top secret is? Alec Baldwin is a famous American actor, director, screenwriter, and winner of many awards. Alex's charm and special acting charisma can safely be called his hallmark, even though they have a downside. Namely, feisty, obnoxious nature and an uncanny ability to get into trouble. We'll tell you about it all in our new video. Alec Baldwin how the Hollywood unintentional antagonist lives and how much he earns. Alexander Ray Baldwin III was born on April 3, 1958 in the small community of Amityville, New York. The village made national headlines 15 years after the future actor was born because of the terrible events. They later formed the basis of the novel The Amityville Horror and a series of films of the same name. Alex's childhood was spent in a large family of teachers Alexander Ray II and Carol. In total, the couple raised six kids, two sisters and four brothers, who chose acting as their future profession. Despite the fact that Alec grew up a very prominent young man, he did not intend to become a movie star at first, because politics was his career choice. Therefore, after graduating from school, he went to George Washington University, devoting himself to the study of political science, at the same time trying to become president of his institution. He lost the election by just two votes. Thanks to his lively mind and natural ability to grasp everything on the fly, studying was easy and enjoyable for him. There was still plenty of time to work as a bartender, a salesman, and to spend money on entertainment. One day, his search for a part-time job led him to working as an extra in a movie. Someone from the crew advised Baldwin to focus on an acting career, noting his height and stature. After some time, the young man decided to follow the recommendation and moved to New York, where he enrolled at the Tisch School of the Arts and the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute. In the early 80s, he was first invited to star in the TV series The Doctors, followed by such multi-episode projects as Hotel, Cutter to Houston, and Knott's Landing. For the first time on the big screen, Alec appeared in a major role in the movie Sweet Revenge, followed by the TV series Love on the Run and Dress Grey. In 1986, the comedy Forever Lulu was released, where Alec got one of the main roles again. In 1988, five films with his participation were released at once. They included Talk Radio, She's Having a Baby, and Married to the Mob. But the true breakthrough was Tim Burton's eccentric comedy, Beetlejuice, which won an Oscar for Best Makeup and got three nominations for the Saturn Award. Barb, honey, we're dead. I don't think we have very much to worry about anymore. Experts criticized only the acting of Baldwin and his scene partner Gina Davis, but Burton insisted that only thanks to such unassuming acting did the main character appear so extensive and expressive. Another indisputable success was the film Working Girl, in which the young actor shone with such stars as Harrison Ford, Melanie Griffith, and Sigourney Weaver. It's like she wants to be my mentor, which is exactly what I needed. I mean, I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere, Mick. Yes, that's great, but let's step on it or the pizza's gonna freeze, honey. Come on. The work was highly appreciated by experts who gave the picture an Oscar and four Golden Globe Awards. In the following years came out the biopic Great Balls of Fire, the black comedy Miami Blues, Woody Allen's melodrama Alice, and the Oscar-winning adaptation of the novel by Tom Clancy, The Hunt for Red October, in which Alec played a CIA agent. Mr. Ryan, would you characterize this as a first strike weapon? Uh, that is a possibility, sir. Uh, it is designed to approach by stealth and to shower its target with multiple independent warheads with little or no warning before impact. Its sequel, Patriot Games, came out two years later but without Baldwin. He refused to star in it because of the work on the Broadway play A Streetcar Named Desire but later admitted that the rejection was due to the fact that a better-known actor was considered for his role. Alec was hurt badly. He even called such an approach sneaky Hollywood tricks. 
In 1991, the film The Marrying Man was released, in which Alec co-starred with Kim Basinger and got $1.5 million for his work. In interviews, the actor admitted that he was madly in love with her and tried to become her partner on the set by any means possible. When he succeeded, he began to win his ideal lover with all his passion. He swamped the actress with flowers and fulfilled all of her whims. As a result, an intense romance between the actors started on set, which resembled the eruption of a volcano. Lovers quarreled and reconciled violently, which did not prevent them from tying the knot of marriage. Kim's decision to consent was not least influenced by Baldwin's chivalrous act. In the early 90s, she had to pay a $9 million penalty to his studio. She had no money and she was preparing to declare bankruptcy. This is when Alec appeared with a proposal to settle her debts and presented her with a ring. However, getting married changed nothing in their lives. On the contrary, things only got worse. Always responsible and punctual, Alec began to allow himself to be late for filming or even disrupt it just because he wanted to spend time with his wife or to have an argument with her. The same behavior applied to Kim, from which all the crew members suffered. There are some really impressive legends about what happened during the filming of the movie The Getaway in 1994, in which the couple acted together. Just give me the hell out of here. Can you do that? Can you do that for me? I'm not spending the next 20 years without you. However, Alec's fee amounted to $4 million. In between shootings and quarrels with his beloved, Baldwin still worked full-time. During this period, such pictures came out as Malice, Prelude to a Kiss, The Shadow, and Glengarry Glen Ross. The fee in the latter was a modest $250,000 for our hero, and outside of filming, the actor received a bachelor's degree in fine arts at New York University. In October 1995, the family of Kim and Alec gave birth to a daughter whom they called Ireland. Pregnancy was very difficult for the actress and was accompanied by severe toxemia and panic attacks. Therefore, after the birth of the baby girl, the parents were terribly worried about her. Once Baldwin even attacked and beat the paparazzi who tried to take a picture of the family. However, the court acquitted the actor, considering that he was only protecting his loved ones. Meanwhile, the TV movie A Streetcar Named Desire and the thriller Heaven's Prisoners were released, for which Alec earned $5 million. He earned almost as much for his work on the role of Bobby DeLofter in the film Ghosts of Mississippi, which came out in 1996 and was highly appreciated by industry experts. At the same time, the thriller The Juror premiered, and the next year, viewers saw the adventure drama The Edge, which brought Alec an income of $7.5 million. Come on, you saved my life. Uh, Buy me something nice when we get home. How'd you like your coffee? I like my coffee like I like my women. <laughs> Bitter and murky. <laughs> In 1998, the actor worked in the movies Thickest Thieves and Mercury Rising, in which he starred alongside Bruce Willis. However, Baldwin was literally forced by the Universal Film Company to agree to a role in this criminal thriller. The fact is that Alec once refused to star in one of its films and signed an agreement by which he would star in a different film on demand. If not, the actor faces a hefty fine. In the next two years, almost a dozen productions with his participation came out. Outside Providence, The Confession, State and Maine, several series, and the animated film Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Among the many notable works of the time, it is worth noting the miniseries Nuremberg, in which Baldwin was entrusted with the main role. He was very convincing as a prosecutor, and the series was loved by audiences and critics. I still can't believe he's gone. For me, it was like losing a father, truly. Whatever I have, whatever I am, it's because of Roosevelt. In 2001, our hero voiced the animated film Final Fantasy and the film The Royal Tenenbaums. In addition, there was the premiere of the romantic war drama Pearl Harbor, in which Alec played Colonel James Doolittle. Top secret means you train for something never done before in aviation history and you go without knowing where you're going. You do it on that basis or not at all? I'll go, sir. I'll go too, sir. Despite the fact that it was a supporting role, he took the training for it very seriously and worked in good faith on the flight simulators at a U.S. military base. The film was well received by the public, gathering almost half a billion dollars at the box office. 
By 2002, Baldwin's relationship with his wife had heated up to the point that it came to a divorce. Between love and hate, there is only one step. Kim and Alec plunged into a series of lawsuits. Of course, the main subject of disputes was custody of their daughter, who was seven years old at the time. The actor furiously accused his former lover of turning Ireland against him and got terribly upset when his daughter refused to talk to him. It got to the point where he snapped directly at the child, leaving her a voice message in which he called the girl names. The recording instantly ended up in the media and the court's possession, finally ruining Alex's chances of getting custody. He was desperate and later admitted that he was ready to kill himself while waiting for the court's decision. Apparently, his work saved him because at that time he was being abundantly bombarded with offers from film studios. Within a few years, he starred in such notable films as Path to War, Second Nature, The Cat in the Hat, and The Cooler. I got you covered in this town. People know you work for me. That's currency in your pocket that you can respect when you walk the floor. Where are you going to get that anyplace else? For his work in the latter, Alec was nominated for an Oscar and a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. In addition, the actor appeared in several episodes of the TV series Friends, the film Shortcut to Happiness, Along Came Polly, The Last Shot, Elizabeth Town, Fun with Dick and Jane, Minnie's First Time, and some TV series. However, the most outstanding is a biographical drama by Martin Scorsese, The Aviator, which came out in 2004 and turned out to be a true masterpiece. The number of awards and nominations, including Oscars, Golden Globes, BAFTAs, and Grammys was just off the charts. In 2006, another Scorsese's masterpiece was released, the crime thriller The Departed. It was followed by the premieres of Running With Scissors, The Good Shepherd, Hick, and Brooklyn Rules. Alec also worked extensively as a voice actor and from 2006 to 2013 starred in the popular comedy series 30 Rock. For his work on it, he was awarded three times for Best Actor in a Television Series by the Golden Globe Jury. In 2008, the actor introduced the film Lime Life. The role was written specifically for Baldwin, which is not surprising as the producers of the film were Alec himself and his brother William. Then came the rom-com My Best Friend's Girl, the family drama My Sister's Keeper, and in 2009, fans rejoiced in the acting duo of Alec and his best friend Meryl Streep in the movie It's Complicated. Just because we've been married for 19 years does not not make this an affair. Okay, but since we were together for so long, it's not really that wrong. Really? You want to run that logic by you? In 2011, viewers saw Alec in another picture with the title Hick, and then he finally got lucky in personal life when he met the beautiful Hilaria Thomas, who was younger than the actor by almost a quarter century. Allegedly, they met at an organic food restaurant. He saw her and immediately asked the charming Spaniard on a date, thus spun a romance based on a love of vegan food and yoga. But this is only a legend which was told by the couple to the media. A little later in an interview, Alec let it slip that it was Hilaria who looked out for him at a restaurant table and took the initiative. Thomas's friends claimed that she had always been interested in getting a rich and famous man and was looking for a match. However, in 2012, Baldwin, who was tired of casual dating, decided to propose to her. After the wedding, the couple began to have children one after another. In total, the parents have had seven children, with Hilaria preferring natural childbirth, and only one of her daughters, Lucia, was born through a surrogate mother. But 2012 marked not only the beginning of the Baldwin's marital happiness, but also a very unpleasant event. Alec had long been pursued by Canadian actress Genevieve Saborin. They met on a movie set in the early 2000s, and since then the blonde has been swamping the actor with letters and messages. When the actor began dating Hilaria, the woman went on the offensive and showed up at his house. The police released the offender with a first notice, but a year later, prosecutors brought the restless fan a new round of harassment charges, and this time the lady was imprisoned almost at the same time. Alex himself was put on trial. He was charged with disorderly conduct for violating the rules of cycling. In the same year, Alex starred in the films To Rome With Love, Rock of Ages, and gave his voice to a character in the cartoon Rise of the Guardians. Over the next few years, there was a fairly large number of films starring Baldwin. The most striking works of the time include Blue Jasmine, Aloha, Concussion, Blind, and Still Alice. You've been seeing the neurologist why? And I think that it might be early onset Alzheimer's disease. Hallie, Hallie, 
that doesn't make any sense at all. In addition to filming, Alex doesn't neglect commercials, giving preference to scripts with good humor. For example, such giants as Amazon and the financial holding company Capital One resorted to his services. Alex's voice can be heard behind the scenes of General Electric and Subaru commercials. Also, Alex just loves to voice cartoons. During his career, he worked on a lot of animated projects, which includes Arctic Dogs, Cats and Dogs, and the second part of the cartoon, The Boss Baby, which grossed over $142 million at the box office. Baldwin also made his mark in the legendary Mission Impossible franchise, in which he played a CIA operative in two installments. Rogue Nation and Fallout were released in 2015 and 2018, respectively. Also in 2018, Alex could be seen in the dramas The Public, Black Klansman, and A Star Is Born, as well as the miniseries The Looming Tower. Then his filmography was enriched by the pictures Drunk Parents, Pixie, Chick Fight, and Motherless Brooklyn. And in 2021, fans could enjoy Alex's great performance in the series Dr. Death, which gathered a lot of positive feedback from the viewers. Do you think the corporate level of the hospital was more interested in making money than in protecting their patients? I think everyone was more interested in making money and protecting themselves rather than protecting their patients. The plot is based on real events and touches on the very sensitive topic of negligence in medicine. On October 21, 2021, a truly tragic event happened in Alex's life. He accidentally shot and killed cameraman Helena Hutchins during the filming of Rust. The talented woman was called a rising star in the cinematic world, and a great future was predicted for her. Not only had the film world missed her, but also her family, including her young son. It all happened during the rehearsal of a scene of the western when Baldwin had to shoot towards the camera. How the live ammunition got to the set is still under investigation. In early February this year, Alec was formally charged as well as the weapons consultant who worked on the film. According to new circumstances, Alec was not properly instructed on the use of the weapon and the consultant did not comply with the safety of ammunition storage rules. The actor faces jail time, although his lawyers intend to prove him innocent. Trying to rehabilitate himself in the eyes of the public, Alec initiated court proceedings, blaming the organizers of the filming process for the accident. He also claimed that he did not pull the trigger and that the shot was unintentional. It must be said that this is not the first time the actor has been in trouble. Alec has anger management problems and on several occasions he has been the subject of legal proceedings. For example, in 2018, he attacked a man with whom he had a disagreement over a parking space and seriously beat him. A year later, amid a wave of allegations of harassment against many Hollywood actors, Baldwin was quick to admit that he also behaved badly toward women. It is worth mentioning a story when he made an unfortunate joke about his intention to buy a Filipino wife, which provoked the wrath of a local senator. The senator made sure that Baldwin is legally banned from entering the Philippines. A few years earlier, he had been removed from a flight in Los Angeles because he refused to turn off his cell phone during the flight. And Alec was not drunk, he simply has an explosive nature. In fact, the actor hasn't been drinking since he was 26 when he went through an Alcoholics Anonymous program. However, Alec now claims that he is on the road to rehabilitation. He is visiting a therapist and learning to manage his anger. Apparently, he is very positively influenced by his wife Hilaria, who has become a real guardian angel for him. Speaking of Mrs. Baldwin, at the close of 2020, there was shocking news that the woman only pretended to be Spanish, imitating an accent. It turned out that her real name was Hillary and she was not born in Majorca, but in Boston. It is not entirely clear why she made this false pretense, but Alec immediately rushed to his wife's defense. Despite a series of scandals, Baldwin continues to work. The action movie Supercell was recently released, and the thriller 97 Minutes is in production. Even the ill-fated Rust will still be completed and released according to some reports. Mr. Baldwin's fortune at the moment is estimated at $70 million. On average, his fee for an episode of a series is estimated at $300,000, but sometimes this figure rises significantly. As for example, in the case of Dr. Death, where he was paid $575,000 per episode. The real estate portfolio Alec has amassed is also impressive. Over the years, the actor bought six apartments in a building in a prestigious area of New York City in order to build a huge penthouse. The interior of the apartment is quite calm, made mainly in bright colors and looks more like a classic American middle-class home. 
The total cost of the facility is about $16 million. Until recently, Alec owns two other apartments. One of them was located in the Upper West Side and was used as an office. The properties were sold for $10 million. Another property is a house in the luxurious Hamptons, which Alec bought back in 1996 for $1.75 million. The spacious mansion has four bedrooms and five bathrooms, a living room, dining room, and office. There is also a swimming pool in the yard. In 2022, this facility was put up for sale for $29 million. But at the beginning of this year, the actor decided to make a discount, and now the price tag has dropped to $25 million. Also in 2022, Alec purchased a farm for his family in Arlington, Vermont. The 20-hectare property includes a historical house built presumably in 1780 and cost the actor $1.75 million. As for Baldwin's car fleet, in 2022, he was spotted cleaning his Cadillac Escalade, which he vacuumed himself. And in 2021, he was filmed next to his vintage BMW, which broke down on the way back from Long Island. Alec Baldwin is a bright Hollywood star and a very unusual person. He has established himself as an actor, and it seems that in his personal life, a long-awaited peace of mind has come too. In addition, he recently received the fantastic news that he and Kim will become grandparents. The big question remains, however, whether the actor will be punished for the camera woman's death. In your opinion, what kind of sentence would be fair? If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.